Well, the largest of the three deals in the past few weeks was Apollo Hospitals acquiring a hospital bed in Gurugram for around 450 crores, followed by Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences or KIMS acquiring majority stake in over a 300 bed multi speciality hospital in Nagpur for around 80 crores. Lastly, the third acquisition was Narayana Health shelling out around 200 crores for an orthopedic hospital, Shiva and Shiva Orthopedics, in their home market of Bangalore. Now, while Apollo Hospital acquisition marked the company's entry into Haryana, the Kim's acquisition was to diversify away from Telangana and AP me and Andhra Pradesh. Meanwhile, the focus of Narayana's acquisition, which is housed within this company's city campus that comprises of the Cardiac Sciences Hospital and their multi-speciality hospital, Mazumdar Shaw Medical Center, was to strengthen their offerings in the orthopedic, neurology and trauma department. So why has m &A picked up in the healthcare space? From a seller's perspective, a few reasons are driving sales such as existing promoters or investors of standalone operations looking to cash out. Reasons range from a lack of an exit for investors as many of the hospitals are too small to list, too inefficient to manage or too insufficient in terms of volumes as there is a movement of patients towards more multi-speciality larger chains. Now from a buyer's perspective, acquisition targets are mainly 150 to 200 bed hospitals or larger. Hospitals have seen business pick up post COVID-19 with domestic growth estimated to be around 10 to 15 percent in the next five years and lastly medical tourism it's becoming a big growth driver in fact the likes of Shalbi is looking at a 150 to 200 cross sized acquisition of multi-speciality hospitals in Delhi and Kolkata to cash in on medical tourism from Nepal and Bangladesh estimates suggest medical tourism could see a growth of anywhere between 18 to 20 percent over the next five years lastly in the past few years the return on capital employed of hospitals has risen from single digits in 2015 to 2018 period to around 10 to 20 percent currently. Recently, increasing risk appetite for acquisitions is indicative in the return on capital employed increasing. But why not fresh capex? Experts say it's easier to acquire a greenfield hospital hospital it takes three to four years to come on stream and longer to even break even an acquisition as described by one of the hospital chains is a plug and play model find a strategic fit and buy it okay thanks a lot for that so let's see this space as ekta was saying medical tourism has come back in a big way so that's perhaps beneficial um, for the hospital sector. Ashutosh Raghuvanshi, the MD and CEO at Fortis Healthcare joins us now uh, to give us his views. Ashutosh, plenty of questions for you but first just to start off, are you seeing a big pickup in terms of medical tourism and overall uh, how much has the business picked up uh, post-COVID? Yes, uh, so medical tourism has been improving quarter on quarter as the relaxation happens in the traveling conditions. Uh, it has come back to uh, pre-pandemic levels and we are seeing a growth from there uh, uh, as well. Uh, recently, there has been a big thrust uh, from the government also uh, in their new program, which they are calling Heal in India. Uh, so I think a portal has been created, which is a very good effort, first effort, I would say, uh, where some degree of regulation in this space is coming in. Uh, in terms of the interpreters and other facilitators, how they would be uh, accredited and how that space would be monitored by, uh, by the uh, regulators. So that is a very welcome step. And I think that will increase transparency and we should expect uh, a, a phenomenal growth in international business uh, in next few years. Mm, that's interesting. Now, uh, Mr. Raghunshi, hi, good morning. Uh, does, does this uh, mean that uh, sort of international patients who get uh, come to India to get themselves treated have to take that route or is that an additional uh, sort of route that they can take and what would this mean? I mean, how would this change your international uh, patient volume for the industry, not just for you? Yes, so it is uh, essentially an optional thing at the moment. It is not the only route. Uh, patients can come through any other route as well. Uh, but this is one route which is going to be very transparent because both the government, the payer, everybody will be able to monitor this on the portal. It's a very well done portal and uh, all the industry stakeholders have been sort of involved in, in the uh, uh, suggestions uh, they have given to evolve this portal. 
so th that definitely is going to be only one of the routes which will provide more transparency and uh, make it easier uh, for 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 the patients to come in. Uh, but that definitely is not going to be the only route. Okay, uh, Mr. Aguvanchi, I'll come back to the business in a bit, but lest we, uh, you know, run short of time, I just wanted to ask you what's happening with the open offer, potential open offer by IHS. Uh, the hearing was expected to be concluded by August. Uh, can you give us some kind of a timeline on when it is scheduled for? Yes, so Sonia, hearing was actually completed last year. Uh, so we have been waiting anxiously, but we hear that uh, we should, uh, the, the judgment is eminent at any time. Uh, within this month is what we are hearing from our lawyers. Uh, so we are just keeping our fingers crossed that it should happen this week or the following week. Okay, so it's very, uh, it's just around the corner. You're saying within this week and this month, right? Within the month of September. Uh, so for uh, IHH is not rethinking their stake in Fortis, right? Absolutely not. IHH is absolutely committed to, uh, to Fortis and India as a market. And they have repeatedly stated that in, uh, Fortis is going to be the main vehicle for expansion. And as uh, Ekta was reporting earlier, uh, the space is very, very attractive. Today, our matrix are very good and we are in a position to go for a massive expansion. And we would be looking at potential targets to acquire as well. Uh, so definitely IHH uh, is, is absolutely committed to Fortis and the Indian market. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, having this legal thing behind us very soon. And then we are looking at uh, uh, accelerated growth. Mm. Mm. Mr. Raghunshi, though, uh, we've been waiting for this uh, judgment for a while now, right? I mean, I remember last time you were on the program. Uh, at that point also, naturally, I mean, these things are not up to you. Uh, it was, I mean, I think you described uh, the judgment as being imminent. Uh, that round the corner, but uh, we, we've not heard anything yet. Uh, any, any uh, are you, uh, I mean, your lawyers are telling you that this is, this is it now, that it'll, it'll come through this month or is this th just a hope? No, Prashant, there are several reasons why we are hopeful that this is going to happen rather quickly uh, because uh, there was a mention made by another party in the case and at that time, the judge had commented that just wait for two weeks and uh, uh, this uh, matter should be concluded. Uh, also, one of the judges on the bench is likely to retire at the end of this month. Usually, the convention is that before that, the judgments are usually yes. Uh, given. Yes. So, has this, I mean, th it's still been an inordinate delay, right? Has it impacted your CAPEX or your expansion plans in any way? And what do the plans stand at currently? So internal expansion did not uh, get affected. In fact, our debt leverage position is very good. Our debt levels are only at net debt at the company level is only about approximately 500 crores. Uh, we have been able to add almost 350 beds. We have made an investment of about 650 crores in the last three years. So some of those initiatives have not uh, been a constraint because of this. Operationally, we are fine. Uh, but as I was saying that, you know, in the merger and acquisition area, uh, we cannot think of because of uh, that would require an external funding. Hmm. Okay, got that. Um, so can you tell us a little more about what the plans of Fortis are? Since you're going big on CAPEX, uh, IHH will be on board very soon. Um, moving forward, any kind of acquisitions that you'll be looking at in the hospital space? You, will you go through the inorganic route? If yes, any timelines that you can share with us? So obviously that is opportunistic, so it will be difficult to comment on specifics. But uh, what I can share is that we have a, a good brownfield expansion plan uh, where we are adding almost 25% uh, further capacity. That will be about 1,500 to 1,700 beds in, in brownfield expansion. Plus, uh, and, and all that for, for that, funds are tied up. So uh, beyond that, we have the capacity to do uh, further uh, mergers, uh, but we would go strategically first in the areas where we already have our presence. And then secondly, if there are any opportunities where uh, a, a preformed cluster in an attractive location and a, at an attractive eva evaluation is available. Any particular specialization, any uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, Areas you'd like to cover with these, uh, what you described as opportunity, opportunistic acquisitions? 
Yes, so not specifically a, a, a particular medical speciality, but the size of the hospitals we are looking at 200 bed plus. Uh, and certainly prefer, it will be preferable if it is within the clusters where we are already present, or at least there should be a strategic fit with the existing operations.